With cold weather, the first thing everyone thinks about is nipples, right? You said it best. Nature's thermostat. <laughs> <laughs> Them things know what temperature it is, I promise you. They'll let you know. <laughs> is it cold outside? Yes, it's cold outside. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to New Heights, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, a Jukes original show presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment. New Heights is a show about two professional bowlers. <laughs> we are pro which, bowling. Oh, which one's uh, which? Are, are you Ernie McCracken or Roy Munson? Which one am I? Who's who? <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, I think that I, I had some Ernie McCracken moments earlier this year, I think. You, you could definitely be... Ernie McCracken, for sure. And I could probably lose a hand in a uh, unfortunate bowling accident. Guys playing with nine fingers. That's right. Being Munson is maybe the official new uh, term for making the Pro Bowl. Being Munson. Well, we are both Munson. And uh, we are your hosts. I'm Travis Kelsey. This is my big bro, Jason Kelsey, out of Cleveland Heights, Ohio. Um, new Heights are episodes that come to you every single Wednesday. Subscribe on YouTube where, and wherever you get your podcasts and follow the show on all social media platforms at New Heights Show with one S. And also visit homage.com slash New Heights to check out all of our official merch. Jason, what we got coming up, brother? Got a great episode, Trav, Yee-hoo. as always. This episode, we're going to get into Trav finally finding a way to get a win over Geno yeah! Smith at something. Great dude, too. Uh, great dude. That's good to know. Uh, the Eagles' unfortunate loss in Dallas. And uh, we're going to get into the unblockable force that is J.J. Watt officially announcing he is retiring following this season. Shout out to J.J., man. But first, as always, new news. New news. New news, old news. Still the number one sports podcast on Apple and Spotify. And now, according to Sports Illustrated, Trav, New Heights is officially the podcast of the year. That's right. Wow. That's what we do. That's what we do, baby. Uh, I guess it's not that surprising, but, you know, here's what they said. It shouldn't be that surprising that when you put two together, two hilarious people who also happen to be brothers and current NFL players, you'd be a hugely, you'd get a hugely entertaining and informative podcast. But it's still impressive to see just how well the podcast works. This season, it's undoubtedly helped that each brother plays for arguably the best team in their respective conferences. Both the Kelsey brothers don't even have to lean on week-to-week in-game experiences to hit a perfect mix of football talk, personal anecdotes, and fun debates. Fun debates. I mean, that about sums up our show right there. I'll tell you what, thank you, Appreciate Sports it. Illustrated. Yeah, very much. I must have knew I was a Sports Illustrated for kids subscriber as a child. We were, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. That oh, was about yeah. the only thing we ever caught you reading was the Sports Illustrated. You know it, man. That and East Bay. You don't really read East Bay. You just shop yeah, and, and point. look at cool shoes that they might have a discount on. Do you have a favorite Sports Illustrated article from growing up that you remember? I wouldn't say an article. I would mm-hmm. say every single it was a monthly uh, yeah. it was a monthly magazine it wasn't a weekly one so every month it would have certain athletes birthdays in the back and it was like a cardboard like rip out like you could rip out the and they were like little like player cards of like birthdays and like some like cool like I don't know word about you know I don't know anything that they liked and I found out who all had my birthday which is the I got yeah. I, I got pretty good company you know I got Mark McGuire I got uh, Patrick Wah also known as Patrick Roy oh. in the Kelsey household because yep. that only pronounces things one way <laughs> <laughs> his way a la our last name and uh Grant Hill man Grant Hill October Grant 5th Hill. baby yeah that's good company. That is good company. I just remember the covers. The covers were always the things that I look forward to seeing. Who was, who's going to be on this month's cover? I'm with you on that. One of the most legendary covers of all time, LeBron James, The Chosen One. That's right. That was a great one. The Chosen One. That was sweet. He had the Irish all-green jersey on, posing yep. like he was Magic Johnson or something, throwing a no-look pass. That's pretty sweet, man. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. Well, speaking of uh, East Bay, uh, did you know they just announced they are closing for good? No, at the end of this year. Yeah. it's officially done. It's sad. They had a hell of a run, man. Shout out yeah. to East Bay, man. I mean, that's where East Bay and I feel like played against sports, where we got almost and Dicks were the like three Kelsey uh, played uh, against sports, though. Yeah, we got a lot of used yeah. goods. 
Ed Kelsey likes himself a bargain. It's always good when you go out there and ice skates that have been broken in by three previous owners' feet. <laughs> and it just smelled like all three combined. You're out there on the driving range with actual wooden woods. <laughs> <laughs> What a guy, man. I'll tell you what, if you can hit if you can hit it far with these guys, man, you can hit it far with the new ones. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> what a guy. All righty. Well, a little fan base name update. Uh the two most popular submissions so far are undoubtedly New Heights Hooligans. The Hooligans. And the ninety two percenters. Ninety two um, percenters is damn good, man. I kinda like ninety two percenters. I I don't know why. It's unique. It's funny. Kind of hits on a lot of things. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. Heights, New Heights Hooligans, though, man, it's got a ring to it. It does have a ring to it, man. We also got an odd uh, submission from our, our old teammate, Jordan Stepp. Right. Jay Stepp, man. Yeah. The, he, the he real mankind. He, he reached out, had a fan base name, The Mules, or Mules, which oh, yeah. um, is an ode to anybody who grew up in the uh, Steubenville, Beaver, Youngstown, Creek, Youngstown, Canton, that entire like Ohio the, Valley area. Like that little, really. Yeah. For some reason, the mules was a, being a mule was like the greatest term of endearment that you could come up with. <laughs> it means you're a hard worker, you know, willing to do anything for your teammates, you know, but you also, you're not just a goody two shoes. You're a mule. You're just a mule. Kinda, you do all the dirty work nobody else wants to do. Um, you're, you're half jackass, so. <laughs> <laughs> I used to. I, I specifically like it when they when they throw that R in there, that mural. Murals, yeah. Murals. Shout out to J Step and all the UC guys, man. Please keep emailing us your submissions at a New Heights Show. That's one S. New Heights Show at gmail dot com. Uh, once we get a clear top four, we're gonna put it out to a vote. It's the only way to settle it. Yeah, got to do it, Elon Musk style. Put it out to a vote. Vote it. All right, fan mentions of the week, Trap. We got a mention from uh, Patrick J. Walsh. Ooh, Mr. Walsh. Um, he was out there on the internet making some uh, Mama Kelsey's, you know, dinner rolls. Yoo-hoo-hoo! The Mama Kelsey's famous dinner rolls? Is that what we're calling them? Mama Kelsey's buns. Buns? Is that what we're calling them? That's what he called them. Time out, man. Mama Kelsey's buns were a Christmas miracle. It's actually pretty fucking funny. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> he even made them into like a, a nice little Christmas tree. He's got it uh, all glazed up and decorated. I mean, it looks great. They look good. My mouth is watering looking at these pictures. I'm not going to lie. He made those look awesome. Uh, Mama Kelsey also made some for me on Christmas morning. That's right. Which I, got, I, we, I had them for Thanksgiving. You had them for Christmas. Yeah. Ah. Well, you know what the difference was? Is you probably had them with like a bunch of people around, so everybody mm-hmm. had one. I ran through two many, dozen by you, myself. What? <laughs> we watched two Christmas movies, and I just sat down there and just. Gosh, that sounds like a great Christmas. Ah, they day. were amazing. They were yeah. absolutely amazing. Well, Patrick, I hope that the dinner roll, the dinner rolls were just as amazing for you. I also, I, mean, I got to pull this up. You had a nice video on there, Trav. Uh, spot on with the new news. A very festive uh, baker. New news. <laughs> new news. As he's whipping he up the batter, shouting out the new news. He can't wait to dig into him. I heard heard what sounded like Laura Walsh also in the tagged background? in the. Yeah, I heard her yeah. sing it. Say a little new news. You guys hit it right on cue. We appreciate it. Glad that Mama Kelsey's buns are uh, becoming staples in other people's households. <laughs> Let's get to some more dumb topics. Our next uh, topic is our no dumb questions section. Just dumb people. No dumb questions, just dumb people. Yeah, this is our fun segment where we try to answer some of the uh, not dumb questions that you guys uh, may have out there. This week, it's from Chad Masters. So Chad says, I have a friend who adamantly says that head coaches that do not call plays don't matter during the actual games. We all try to reason with him, but he doesn't listen. So his question is, for no dumb questions, do head coaches that don't call plays matter during games? You want to start it off, Trev? 100%. I mean, there's clock management, game management, decisions that somebody has to make, and that's somebody usually has 51% of what's going on on the field and what's going on on, in a team's, you know, locker room, huddle. Um, Outside of the play calling, there's so much more – that a head coach needs to do on game days. Even if it's an offensive coach that does call plays, he's got to understand what's going on the defensive side at all times. You know yep. what I mean? You can't 
you you have to know when to challenge, when not to challenge. You know the certain rules that are happening, uh, especially in like situational football, late in games, late in the half. There's just so much to, that goes into to being a head coach outside of just you know offense, defensive play calling. That's for damn sure. No doubt, um, especially you know as you become more aware of like the different situational decisions that have to happen. Um, I actually think it's really nice to have a coach whose sole job is to really like narrow in on these like specific situations that only come up, uh, you know, once a season, if that, yeah. and, um, I kind of like it when the coach doesn't call plays, they're more involved with the team. They're more in the moment. They're more managerial and kind of like, co- like they communicate more. Um, I feel like calling plays is hard. You're like in it. You're, you're trying to figure out what you're going to do the next series when you're not calling them. You know, there's constantly you're busy trying to figure out what's going to what you're going to try and do next to the defense or vice versa. Um, so I actually think, you know, a lot of the best head coaches out there don't call plays. And uh, now most of them have done it at some point. Yeah. Um, and I think it's good to have at some point have coached and called plays. But does the head coach need to do that? I don't think he does. I actually think sometimes it winds up better, just like you do, Trev. I mean, there's a good reason. I mean, not all good play callers make good head coaches. Matter of fact, there's a lot of good play callers and good offensive or defensive minds that are not good head coaches. Yeah. Uh, the, the bigger part of that job is, you know, being able being to – Being a leader. Yeah, being able to lead, being able to uh, manage, being able to communicate – uh, being able to keep everybody going in the right direction, situational ball, all those things are more meaningful than calling plays. So, yeah, Andy doesn't call plays anymore, right? <laughs> EB calls the plays now, right? No, no, Andy's, from, uh, from my understanding, Coach Reed is still calling the play. Oh, really? Because, yeah, because there's times where I'll come off, play. I'll get tired, I'll come off the field, and he'll look at me, he's like, this is your play! Why are you off the field? What but, are- but, yeah, that's a good point. So but he knows what's sure being called. Even when he's not up. calling the plays, he knows what's being called. Yeah, but you know when he's when a guy looks at you like he's he's definitely you. the one that's calling it. I got you. We both agree with you, Chad. Your friend is uh, really dumb. He's a dummy. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> I feel like he's mean. Your friend's yeah, incorrect. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there's no dummies out here. Do you think this is a made up friend? Do I think this is a made-up friend? Do you think Chad just wants to know the answer to this, and he's, he's just making it sound like, hey, this isn't really – I don't think this, but he kind of really does. <laughs> so he's made up his friend, kind of like when you, like, you're trying to you know, talk to a girl that you're a little <laughs> nervous about. Like, oh, my friend thinks you're really cute. Chad, if you're pulling one on us, man. Chad, just be – hey, don't be afraid. Just ask the question. If, if, if that's what you want to know, just ask a board. Before we get into the rest of the show, we need to shout out one of our incredible partners. Mm. Uh, the first shout one out. is the first one is a product that I use every day, uh, and I started using because well, they uh, sent me a box of it for free. Not right now. It's Athletic Greens product AG One, and you know who else is taking it now is Ed Kelsey. Hey, he Papa told me Kelsey over Christmas. On the train. Yeah. He uh, wanted to start his day off a little bit healthier, and he said it's. Already feeling like it's making a difference. The healthy train is rolling, baby. So he's he's already feeling good about it. Are you a yeah. Are you a dr- green juice guy? Are you? Is that something that you you're? I guess in so. That world now. I guess so. I mean, I wouldn't really call it a green juice. I feel like it's uh, you know, you're more taking it because of the uh, multivitamins and the probiotics that are in it. But it is green and it does taste good. Nice. Well, is it easy to keep up with? Like, is it easy to prepare and all that stuff? Is it? Yeah, it's super easy. You just put a scoop of AG One. Into a shaker bottle, shake it up every morning, put it down your gullet. If you guys listening have been looking for something simple to start your day off healthy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. (laughs) I heard a whole bunch of free stuff. That's all I just heard right there. (laughs) All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash newheights. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash new heist to take ownership over your health and pick up your ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Here we go. All right now. Before we move on, you guys know we love uh, doing this show because we get to share everything about our NFL lives with all of you. But there is one place that we don't want to share everything, and that's online. Uh, that's, that's true. That's right. That's yeah. right. If, that's why when I'm at home looking at film going through uh, my playbook, 
I never go online without using ExpressVPN. All right, ExpressVPN is an app that reroutes your internet connection through their secure servers so your ISP can't see the sites you visit. Because we don't know what team our service provider roots for, but with ExpressVPN, it doesn't matter. And we know our info isn't getting shared. Yeah, most of the time I don't even realize I have ExpressVPN on. It runs seamlessly in the background, and uh, all you have to do is tap that one button, bow, and you're protected. ExpressVPN nice. is available on your devices so that there's no excuse. So protect your online activity today with the VPN rated number one by Business Insider. Visit our exclusive link, expressvpn.com slash new heights, and you can get an extra three months free on a one-year package. Got to live free. That's dot com slash new heights. Expressvpn.com slash new heights to learn more. Expressvpn.com slash new heights. Slash new heights. No, you got to keep going high. That was. You don't like the barbecue sauce? Baby, 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 baby. E X P R E S S. VPN.com. VPN.com. All righty then. Well, moving on to 12 bold topics to wrap up what is week 16? Damn. We're almost at the end, ladies and gentlemen. I think that was week 17. Week 17 will be this week. I don't think so. There's 18 weeks, one by. No, there's 19 17 weeks. 17 games. <gasps> You're right. It's what AP math class gets you, boys. You didn't do AP math class. I know you did. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. What was what was the uh, nature studies? Was that nature uh, studies, baby? <laughs> Mr. Thaxton, <laughs> our our boy. Let's go, baby. Oh gosh, learning about them trees and, and birds <laughs> and ants and bugs and what makes this world go round, man. We used to go on nature walks at nature studies class and. Uh, I'll tell you what, man. I used to get lost. <laughs> Somehow lost in the I'd, trees. I'd always find my way home <laughs> during those nature walks. Hey, you were good at finding your way home. I couldn't find my way home sometimes. I, I had to go in the neighbor's house the one time I got lost. You remember that? <laughs> I got lost two blocks over on Essex. <laughs> Didn't know how to get home. This guy's ridiculous. How are you in high school? You don't know how to get home, man. I wasn't in high school. This is earlier than high school. Oh, all right. My bad. <laughs> I do remember, though. You Wasn't it like, uh, yeah, we're getting off topic. All right. Yeah. So uh, teeing up these 12 bold topics, starting off with uh, both of our games is how we usually do it. Jason tees, tees up the topics on my game and uh, vice versa. Jason, start it up, baby. Now let's start it off with your game, Trev. Chiefs 24, Seahawks 10. <laughs> you did it. We'll take a win. You finally did it. <laughs> you finally beat Gino. I know where you're going. I know you were You got him. It took you a long time. <laughs> and it was hyped. It was hyped up. I only got one win. He still got the he still got more under his belt, but I finally got one on the board, man. You got one. You got one on him. Sports Illustrated called it the biggest NFL ri rivalry nobody <laughs> knew about, including Gino. Uh <laughs> Gino said he might line up at safety. I don't think he did. He didn't line up at safety for the he game. Didn't. That, he didn't. We, we got to get that next time. Uh, the C, even the Seahawks tweeted about it. Yeah, they smoked me. That was pretty good. <laughs> that was pretty good. Showed a video of, of Patrick Mahomes and Gino Smith talking pregame. Uh, yep. Looked like giving each other a bunch of love and respect. And uh, the Seahawks tweeted, um, probably talking about Travis's West Virginia scholarship that <laughs> never happened. Well played, Seahawks. Twitter, that was pretty good. Well, you might have got the last laugh. You did have your highest receiving yardage in a while, six for 113. Yeah, your highest yardage since week 11. You finally hit 800 career receptions. Man, it's crazy to even think about. That's how many times I've caught the ball. That's wild. All joking aside, it's feel, it felt like you guys put together uh, – one of your best games in a while. What do you think? Yeah, I think we started off fast as an offense. Our defense played their tails off the entire game, absolutely shutting them down, only 10 points. Whenever you put a, a guy like Geno Smith, who's having a, a career year this year, um, when you hold him to 10 points, you're doing your damn job on the defensive side. They were getting after the sure. quarterback. They were playing great in the back end. And it's yeah. just, you know, when, when a defense can do that, um, Patrick Mahomes is is known for being able to put up at least three touchdowns. So it makes our job ten times easier and, and really puts the team in a great position. And I really love the way they've been playing. They've been playing like this for the past, you know, 
number of weeks uh, really coming together. I think what uh, Spags' defenses have shown us in the in the past, our defensive coordinator, what he's shown us in the past is that he finds ways to to get better as the year goes on. And you're definitely seeing that this year. Uh, getting a lot of young guys acclimated, uh, getting a lot of you know of the new guys uh, playing playing together even more than we were in the in the beginning of the season, and that's what happens when you go through these big time games. Sometimes the tough losses, but anytime you have you know those uh, tight games throughout the season, you find ways to come together more and more. And I think uh, all three phases we're starting to do that uh, coming coming down here into the stretch of the season, and that's when you want to be playing your best ball, man. No doubt, and. Um yeah, it, it felt like it was a particularly impressive. It was your first double-digit win since November 27th against the, against the Rams, and you did so in 10-degree weather. It was 10 degrees of kickoff. It was sunny and, and 10 degrees of kickoff. I think it got up to like 20. Um, Are you saying it wasn't that cold? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I played in what felt like way colder games. Was it not windy? There's no wind? There was a little bit of wind, but not enough to make you, you know, notice it. Like, I'm not out there like, man, this wind is ripping my nips apart right now, man. I was about to say, I mean, why is it the nipples are the first thing everybody goes to? That's the first thing I went to. With cold weather, the first thing everyone thinks about is nipples, right? You said it best. Nature's thermostat. <laughs> <laughs> Them things um, know what temperature it is. I <laughs> they'll let you know. Is it cold outside? Yes, it's cold outside. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Speaking of nipples, Seahawks were uh, shirtless before the game. Did you see that? Did you witness nips that out. happening? You saw nips them with out. the nips out. Nips out. Yeah, I was walking in the stadium and I saw a few guys warming up without their shirts on. I don't know what that's really, what message that's sending or what that what that does. I mean, why don't you just warm up every time with your shirt off if that's what you're gonna do? Maybe they do. I don't know. Maybe that's I, why. Maybe, they, and maybe they do. <laughs> it's a good the point. Shirtless, maybe they do. The shirtless warming uppers. I'll tell you what. They probably got a cool pick out of it. Everybody's wearing ski masks with no shirts on. You got the you got the fog coming from your face. Your breath fog. Probably a pretty epic photo. It's the coldest game at Arrowhead since week 15 of the 2016 season. Did you know that? Oh, no. I, yes, because I played in that game, and that game was fucking cold. <laughs> One degree. High wind. High wind, too. We did not throw the ball very much in that game. We ended up losing that game. Those are the Tennessee Titans, man. Was anybody shirtless for that warm-up? It's a good question. It's a good question. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. 2016, I don't remember the pregame, but uh, I remember uh, Tyreek Hill took one to the house, but that was probably our only big-time play in that one. I remember walking out to the huddle after a, a long Tennessee drive being like, man, I feel like I am just in the freezer right now, a frozen piece of steak. <laughs> well, speaking of uh, shirtless people at the game, I don't know if you saw this on Twitter, mm -hmm. uh, but there's now a thing called a shoey, which I, apparently is, I think, chugging beer from a boot or a shoe. Das boot? There was a fan shirtless doing a shoey at the game. Do you support that, Trev? Do you support that kind of a behavior in a public uh, venue? I mean, it's alcohol. It kills the germs, right? <laughs> if that's what you want. I, I'm more of a chug out of the glass kind of guy. You know? Yeah, yeah. I've also sweated in shoes a whole lot to where, you know, that stench kind of gets to me. And it's like, I'm not drinking anything out of there. And that boot that he was rocking had definitely been worn a few years in a row. Yeah, it's got some weather to it. It's It's got some bacteria living in that thing that is now in his gut. <laughs> Uh, maybe uh, he's on to something. Maybe this is the future of probiotics. Not right now. Anyways, <laughs> impressive feat. I don't know that I'm going to be uh, chugging from a boot unless it's a... Uh, das Boot. Das Boot. We got to get that going. I'm with it. I definitely have one downstairs. Also associated with this game, you guys gave Andy Reid a Christmas present. <laughs> yeah. After the game. You personally handed Andy a cheeseburger that was wrapped in, what was that, a shoebox? Oh, yeah. I don't know if you guys do this, but uh, Chiefs Media, Chiefs social, social team, will actually put up a, uh, a camera with um, like a sheet of paper underneath that kind of yeah. describes or asks a question or something. And they we, said, do what, we do it. What would, you, what would you get Coach Reed for Christmas? I'm and like the Grinch of that stuff. I don't I, – I, I'm – whatever. Jason. Yeah, go ahead. Jason. I know. I got to be better. Just, just play along every now and then, man. It's for kicks and giggles, especially if it's like Coach Reed. Um, but that, for, it was for giggles everybody. and shits. There you go. 
Everyone walked up to that camera and said, I would love to treat him to a cheeseburger. It was cheeseburger, and then it was Air Force One. I'll uh, get him some, some fresh Air Force Ones because before – Coach Tomlin gave the entire Steelers team black Air Force Ones to kind of like build up that uh, that toughness and that yeah yeah that, that black forces man. There's something about them black forces. Dog. It means I'm doing about, work in black forces. I'm, I'm about business. Yeah, you don't want, want to fuck with me. Coach Reed's been rocking black forces. Uh, I think since the Eagles days, really. He's definitely warm every game day that I've ever been a part of. I actually you know snuck into the. Uh, the equipment room and and ask the equipment guy, you know, hey, does Coach Reed have any of those uh, AWR? Because he's got them AWR stitched in the back. Those things are Nike samples, basically. Time out. What's Andy's middle name? Now I gotta know. I think Wilbur? it's Walrus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, AWR. Andy's gonna, Andy's uh, I'm pretty you. sure it's Walter, and it's uh, it's out there. I think. I don't know. Is it? We Walter. Might need to, we, yeah. Can we get on that? Do we have production team? Helping? It is. Help. It's yep. Walter. Nice. Good job, Trip. I looked it up uh, when I got the shoes, but um, yeah. So it was either get him a cheeseburger, or get him a, sh- uh, a fresh pair of forces, and um, I had very little to do with this. I would think you just the, were the, the uh, social. Gift. I just I just happened to be there. You just handed it to him. Yeah, but I'll take full credit for giving Coach Reed a cheeseburger on Christmas. Yeah, personally, I think the cheeseburger is way better than the forces. That was amazingly done. Cheese Media did it right. Gambling a little bit there. I mean, what if he shakes the box? He kind of, sh- he kind of, you know, if you watch the video, he kind of shook. He rattled it. He tried to, yeah. He he, he played along and kind of like uh, peeked in there a little bit and shook it up just a little bit. And I was like, no, 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 no. And the but, burger, uh, the burger stayed. Stayed together. They they knew something. They knew that yeah. just in case you know somebody drops this or he shakes it up or you know whatever, we got to have this burger still intact. <laughs> looking good and i'll tell you what i don't know what it was but that burger did look good it was something about the, the the bun was like real shiny and you get a good bun on a burger Woo, baby die gone merry christmas coach reed yeah merry christmas coach and uh great job chief's uh social team i'm putting yeah. that together that was awesome shout out to my guy take Cruz, baby before we get to the rest of the show if you love daily fantasy i do you need to check out our partner DraftKings. kings all right now they're giving new customers a free shot at a share of millions of prizes with their first deposit. That sounds good. All new customers need to do is download the DraftKings app now and sign up using promo code New Heights. That sounds pretty easy. What else is also easy is playing fantasy football. Just pick from your favorite players each week, enter contests, and win cash prizes weekly. Sounds easy. And with a free shot at a share of millions of dollars in total prizes with your first deposit, it's the perfect time to show off your football game. Just download the DraftKings app now and sign up using promo code New Heights. This week, new customers can get a free shot at a share of millions, millions of dollars in total prizes with your first deposit. That's right. Just enter promo code New Heights to get a free shot at a share of millions in prizes with millions. your first deposit. That's code New Heights. Only at DraftKings, ladies and gentlemen. Moving on to Eagles Cowboys, man. An electric game, man. I I loved watching the game. It was a uh, it was a barn burner all the way down to the end. Uh, Forty to thirty four, Cowboys get it. Obviously, Jalen Hurts down. Um, Garner Minshew had himself quite a day. Yeah, I um I really I was impressed by how he played. Um, a few unfortunate turnovers that uh that that basically was I think the the difference in the game. Um, the three that that I can remember at least. But um, he mm-hmm. was named a starter midweek, too. It was midweek uh, for the Dallas game, yeah. arguably going into one of the biggest games of the season. Can you take us through anything behind the scenes uh, with how you prep this week? It's always a little different when you got preparation for a backup quarterback or a quarterback that's coming in uh, that's new to the system or new to, to the game week. Well, actually, you just touched on it, too. Um, he was named the uh, starter midweek, but he was also – he wasn't even in the building for the f- – our Wednesday, which was the Tuesday practice that week, because he was doing a eulogy at Mike Leach's funeral. She oh, wasn't wow. even there the first day of work. R.I.P. Mike Leach, man. It was a different week for a number of the a uh, number of reasons. Obviously, the starters down, uh, but you know we've played with Gardner before. We played with him last year against the Jets. Uh, I think everybody anticipated him playing well. Uh, you know he's a dialed in guy. He's smart. He uh, he's a competitor. Uh, one of those guys that, you know, just kind of wears his emotions on his sleeve type. 
Uh, and he's he's fun to be around, man. I thought he played well. I really did. I think he played well, good enough for us to win. Obviously, the three turnovers, the two interceptions, I don't really know how much you can put that on him. But I think that, uh, you know, the turnovers did hurt us in the end. But outside of that, I thought he he was composed enough. He, he, he did his job very well. Um, you know, we just, you know, we weren't good enough across the board. You know, I think, uh, yeah, whenever you have a guy coming in, you, you just focus a little bit more on doing your job that much better and communicating it. You know, you always want to make sure you're communicating with the quarterback, but when there's a new guy going in there, you want to over communicate, you want to overdo everything to make sure that everybody's on the same page. I'm right there with you. You guys actually have a lot of similarities, man. I mean, is, who? Is, is he exactly who everyone thinks he is? You know, the, the, some notable things to talk about are uh, he tried to break his own hand with a hammer in order to gain an extra year of eligibility at, yep. Eastern Carol- er, at Eastern Carolina. You gained 60 pounds just to get a scholarship um, in college. Garden Minshew used to stretch in the locker room only wearing his jock strap. Uh, brought that ritual with him to the NFL. Did you see him in there? Does I have he, not seen him stretching with his jock strap, but well, I guess we are similar in that sense. A male, sometimes, a male that, yeah. sometimes I'll just walk, wear my jock strap and go put uh, my pre workout in the middle of the locker room, just strutting my stuff. Just strutting, yeah. And yeah. You, you did the ESPN body shoot, not scared to show off your body. Oh. Um, not ashamed at all. Uh, lived in an old person bus. No, old no. prison. Old prison old bus. Prison. Old yeah. prison bus during uh, spring practice this year. And you've been telling me since your rookie year you've been wanting to live on a boat on the delaware man i did i for the longest time i wanted to buy a houseboat and live in the delaware river you guys um, you guys might be long lost bros man i don't know there's some it's similarities matter. for sure yeah but i think he's uh he is a very unique guy i don't know that anybody's similar to gardner Minshew. i think uh <laughs> that's one of the things that make him uh a fun guy to have in the locker room is you know he's not trying to be anything he's just you know whatever he is he it's it's kind of his own thing the nfl world definitely got attracted to him down there in jackson or yeah jacksonville for a lot of the stuff he was doing and how he was uh the energy he was bringing on the field when they were they were rolling and they were winning and he played well 24 40 for 355 two tutties um the two interceptions you know there's a lot that go into turnovers you know not not all interceptions are the are the quarterback's fault i know uh There was a few plays this year that I could have ran my route way better and gave Pat a better or easier, friendlier throw that turned into interceptions. And, you know, I put that on myself. But uh, Pat gets hit with the the interception. You can never you can never blame it on one or the other. You know, it it, it just is what it is. I'm not. I don't. Wanna, I don't want to take shots at any you know, any of the receivers or Garner on on your team. You know, it just you know yeah. the turnovers are just such a big part of the outcome of a game like this. Yeah, it's unfortunate. You know, I think and one of them I thought was pass interference. But um, you know, like you said, these things kind of happen, and you got to try and weather them and and put yourself in positions where it's not going to happen and. Uh, there's a lot of things that go into interceptions and turnovers, and it's not always just the guy who's kind of at the front of it. Yeah. Well, uh, he got in with the QB sneak. Cowboys knew it was coming. Who doesn't, um, baby? What are you guys saying to the D-line? You got, you, are you saying anything? There's a mic'd up clip saying you know what's coming. But are you saying yeah, we this said that last time. time? No. I, I, <laughs> especially that one in particular. We had just run inside zone like four times in a row right at him. Mm-hmm. I was gassed. I was beyond dead tired. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, my God, let's just leave. Please get in the end zone. Please, somebody push me in the end zone. I don't think people understand how gassed you can get on for a long drive, man, especially if you're an O-lineman. Or, um, I know earlier on or a couple years ago, I would play every single play on offense. I was 100% snap count and yeah. some of those long drives, man. <laughs> oh, boy. It used to suck. But um, yeah. you find ways. You find ways to get right in here, man. Get right up here. It's all up here. It's all up here, man. Right here, all heart, baby. That's what you did. You got that thing in there, man. Most underrated play of the game might have been uh, the Jerron curse tackle on the fumble recovery, man. That was, uh, I mean, that's a touchdown saving tackle right there. And he he, he, he scooped the ball pretty smooth. I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty sure I was right there and I would have caught him. But I'll give it to Garner. You're hawking him? Or Look you or you had the angle. If you watch the video, I didn't have an angle, but I'm hawking him. I'm, I guarantee I can outrun that guy. What? 
<laughs> no way. I've tried running away from him. I can't get away from him. I don't know how. Yeah, there's no chance. But it was a, it was a great <laughs> tackle. It was an awful situation. Especially, you know, what we had seen the week before. A quarterback in a similar situation. Doesn't, doesn't make the tackle. Doesn't make the tackle. I mean, this isn't Chandler and Jones. Touchdown. But <laughs> this is right. This is right. I mean, it's the biggest safety in the game, though. But he, it was, it was a great job. All you got to do is pick a leg. That's what I don't understand. What, anyway, let's hey, not get back on that. Fi- I was about to say, he fixed it this week. <laughs> he found out how to get after them legs this week. We'll get to that in a second. But maybe that's what I did. Everybody's like, dude, why didn't you just go for his... Up top, up top. Yeah. <laughs> Oldest trick in the book. Playoff atmosphere, huh? A.J. Brown after the game, uh, in quotes, today was a playoff game. I'm kind of glad that we went through that because we're still learning, uh, we're still growing, and that's what it's uh, going to be like in the playoffs. And um, is December football? Uh, is it just a little different? Can you find those playoff style games? I feel like you can find them throughout the season. Like as long as yeah. it's a good team and you know a good matchup, you know it, it can get pretty intense. It ends up being a playoff atmosphere, especially a lot of the in-conference games later in the year because you know how much it's going to mean for the playoffs, right? You know, you start getting into games which are more important because now you, your your opportunities are going to be a little bit less. So I actually love this quote from AJ, and yeah, I think he's better. spot on. There was a different feel to the game. There was a different feel warming up. There was a different feel preparing during the week. We all knew how important it was to go out there and play well. Um, so, you know, what – playoff games atmospheres do is it heightens everything which mm-hmm. means a lot of the times anxiety goes up and and in and, and your sometimes you can overdo things or you can lose track of the little things that allow you to be successful every time you step out on get, the field get a little uncharacteristic man yeah and you know listen we haven't turned the ball over four times very often uh, this season i think it's only happened one other time uh and we lost that game against washington i don't know if we've even turned it over four times on the washington game but um, you know, it's hard to overcome that. You know, we our defense played lights out for most of the game, but they couldn't get off the field on third and fourth down. I mean, you know, I, I felt like I think it was a really good thing for our team to go through. I think it's always good to test yourself against good teams. Dallas played a hell of a game. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this is they a team that plays, we're – man. This is a team that we're probably going to see in the playoffs. Um, I mean, you never know how things are going to shake out, but, um, you know, they're right up there with the best in the NFC – uh, we could very well see this team again. And, um, you know, I think that we all know that we could have played much better. And I'm, I'm sure they feel that way too. But, you know, I think that, uh, you know, watching the tape was a little uh, – it's frustrating. It's frustrating when you don't, you know, play your best. And I think that um, it's good to go through that. It's good to learn from it. And it's good to, uh, you know, moving forward when you're in that situation again, be a little bit more locked in, a little bit more dialed in. Chris Long had a great, I think – one of the best things when we were going, uh, when we went to the Super Bowl in 2017, we had a bunch of guys that had been there. We had Chris Long, we had Malcolm Jenkins, we had we had guys who had won it, Legarrette Blunt, and they all kind of said the same thing, man. They're like, you know, don't let the moment get the better of you. Don't let the situation dictate what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. You know, you just got to go out there, do your job, be where you're supposed to be, do it with proper technique, and then when the play's there to be made, you'll make the play if you're doing it right. Yeah. You, know, you can't go out there looking to try and have things happen. You can't go out there and, hey, I'm going to do this because I'm I'm going to make a play or do something. It's, yeah. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't. And, uh, uh, typically, so, ha- when when you're doing that kind of stuff, you make even more mistakes and you do yeah. things that uh, you don't need to be doing. And I'm, I'll am i be the first one to raise my hand and say that I've, I've been in. We've all been there. I've been in those situations and hurt my team doing that kind of stuff, man. To go back to AJ's comment, veteran comment, Love what he said, and it's true. You you feel those playoff games, playoff style or playoff atmosphere style games. And, uh, you know, you try and obviously win every single game, but if you come out in the fight at least, you know, you learn how to get better as a team in those critical moments down the stretch. Uh, and that a, a game for us like that was uh, the Bengals game not too yep. long ago. I definitely felt yep. that playoff like style atmosphere in that game. Um, and that was a huge game for our our young guys and uh, and you know not not to even say myself because I I was the big part of the outcome of that game uh, and mm-hmm. us losing it. 
but um it's it's to feel be in those moments and to to be able to focus on all the little things and uh and just try and do your job and um all that is uh it's it's huge for for guys to be able to be in that atmosphere um even before the the bullets are really flying in the playoffs for sure well right on moving on to player insights on the NFL storylines baby and uh it's official what's that we, we are professional bowlers Hey, Pro Bowl! We, uh, we made it. Uh, we made it again. Sixth year uh, for you, uh, eighth year for myself. Um, Come on, why you do you became... got to do that? Why do you got to do that? Just well, because say... I'm gonna hype you up. I'm gonna hype you up right here because you became oh, okay. just the fifth player in NFL history to be drafted in the sixth round and have at least six Pro Bowls. Uh, and other notable names on that list. On that list, I know one: Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Greatest six round pick of all time. And uh, another one, Antonio Brown, who is Antonio pretty Brown. Good. It's pretty I, damn good. Yeah. I did not know AB was a six round pick. You would think a guy that talented, there's no way he's there in the sixth round. Chippewa. What, what are we doing, GMs? What, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> How do you let somebody like that get to the sixth round? I, I don't know. He definitely had some success. I remember watching his highlights at Central Michigan. Shout out to all the Central Michigan guys out there. Eric Fisher, what's up, baby? Um, and then uh, two offensive linemen, Ken Gray, Cardinals guard, and uh, Vikings center, Matt Burke. Matt Burke, baby. Might Vikings be, uh, and uh, Ravens won a Super Bowl with the Ravens, actually. Ooh, got, that man got that's a good. ring. So that's pretty good yeah. company, man. Congrats on that. That's That's awesome. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's cool. It, I feel like it's like. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Cool. It's it's awesome. It's an awesome. You know, I um, I think Pro Bowls are are a blast if you if you end up going to them. Uh, but you try your best not to go to Pro Bowls. There so, you go. Uh, yeah, but a fun little stat line uh, with uh, us having fourteen combined Pro Bowls. Uh, now we only trail Peyton Manning and Eli Manning. As well as Bruce and Clay Matthews Sr. as uh, for the most brother Pro Bowls by brothers in the National Football League. So we're second place right now. Yes, we trail only only those two sets of brothers who both have eighteen. We're sitting at 18? fourteen. Yeah, Ooh, so that's gonna be tough. looks like you got to play gonna, two more years. Yeah, you're gonna have to play another five years, trip. Yeah. Who, who else do we got? We got the Watt brothers. Ho- hopefully, I can. The Watt be brothers got to be up for there. the next five. The Watt brothers probably are up there, and they'll probably climb that list uh, as uh, T.J. Watts, you know, probably makes He's, one every single year until he retires. So yeah, they'll be up there on, on that list as well. Well, that's pretty cool. So uh, when it comes to awards, uh, what means more, the Pro Bowl, All Pro? Are we throwing top one hundred in there? How do you feel about it? I think all of these awards are great, but it's obviously you know, it's the greatest more- team sport ever. Yeah, we're we're it's all about the team game. It's team awards that really matter. Um, something that I really think is cool about this year's Pro Bowl for us, at least, is all five of our offensive linemen are either in the Pro Bowl or an alternate for the Pro Bowl. That's pretty damn uh, cool. Which yeah, which means like all five of us are really doing a great job this year. And um, I think that means more than me getting a Pro Bowl. All Pro is cool. Probably the highest honor you can get because there's only one guy selected at each position. And it's more, I think, Pro Bowl, the fan vote kind of can mess up, you know, which guys are truly playing the best that year. I think All Pro is usually better at getting that right. Mm -hmm. Um, And then the top 100, I don't even know if that's a real thing, to be honest with you. I don't think I've ever (laughs) filled a sheet out. (laughs) I'm definitely, to, I've definitely filled it out a couple of times. I I don't okay. know who. Yeah, I don't. I, I it can't just be the players. They got to have more people putting it out there. I think what's more cool about the players. top 100 is the videos, the videos. that come out. Yeah. The guys that you know, you kind of see how guys talk about your play or talk about you as a player. And I think that that respect uh, throughout the league is way cooler than where I could ever be ranked. Yeah, and it's like that's also with the Pro Bowl. Like the coolest thing about the Pro Bowl isn't. Being in the Pro Bowl, the coolest thing about the Pro Bowl is like going there and meeting all these guys around the league that you have a lot of respect for. You know what I mean? Like that's the thing that I think is most fun is talking to all these guys, 1, sharing a beer with them. You know, whatever it's going to be this year with Eli and Peyton coaching it and the extracurriculars, curric, curric, what extra curric. You're right there. You're right cur- there. You curriculum, almost... curriculars. There you go. Is that extracurriculars. It? Yep. All right. That's what um, I'm going with. 
Yeah, I think that's the uh, the best part of the Pro Bowl. You end up meeting a lot of cool people. I'm right there with you, man. Yeah, the stories you hear at the Pro Bowls from guys on different teams and all that, all, just all that jazz, man. Just being around you, you don't get opportunities to be around your counterparts very often. Like yeah. I think we're lucky because whenever I'm visiting you, I'm around your teammates. Whenever you're visiting me, you're around my teammates, and we kind of get that more than and, and like other players would. Yeah. But there's something about going to a Pro Bowl or even the tight end you stuff that Kittle and Olsen uh, kind of started and brought brought to my attention. I Going to those are so freaking cool, man, because you just you're around guys that you see and you watch play all the time. And just to hear their stories, hear their takes on on certain things that that's going on in their world uh, of, you know, the team, whether it be the offense or, you know, what they see or who they go up against, you know, those stories are priceless man just being around those guys is awesome so yeah i'm right there with you do you have any relationships or, or individual or guys you've met at the pro bowl that have been uh some of the cooler guys or interactions or things that you've liked in um, particular that you can think of off the top of your head yeah it was it was the first one that i that i went to out in hawaii um odell mm -hmm. this is the first time meeting odell uh odell beckham jr that is and uh being around him and that energy it was just it was cool uh and yeah. on top of that i got to be around uh a few other a few of the other tight ends throughout the league tyler eifert who was drafted with me or same draft class uh zach ertz who's with my same draft class all these guys that you know you watch on film all the time like we were just saying um i feel like those are probably the that that first pro bowl uh, i just got a lot of memories from being out there yeah. that year. Yeah, I like um man, I, I mean I could go on and on about the old line guys. Uh probably the one that sticks out the most is Travis Frederick. Back when he was playing, I feel like he was in the Pro Bowl every year. Uh but he always had a cooler with beer in it going to every single uh okay. practice, anything you were going to, there was beer in there. Um you got uh Josh Sitton was a character. I mean there's all the old line guys are great. Uh probably one of the my favorite ones though was the year that Chris Carter was the coach and for some reason, Martellus Bennett was on the team and th you want to talk about the most fun bus rides of all time. Oh yeah! I would just make a point to go to Martellus Bennett and Chris Carter's bus and just sit on there and just Marty, bullshit. Marty's world, I mean, baby, bro. I love that you want to talk man. about it. He is such a creative individual. Like you're talking about a different level thinker right there. It was a blast going and sitting on those buses. I got, um, I got a story about his brother. Mike? Mike Bennett. Michael Bennett. Yeah. I was teammates uh, with Mike. That, again, first year pro bowler out mm -hmm. there trying to feel out the situation. Like, is everybody playing their tail off? Is everybody yeah. kind of just, you know, coming off the ball in that O line, yeah. D line? That's really where, you know what I mean? That's really where it's kind of like a, I don't know. Everybody else is just having it's fun. unioned but, up. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's unioned up a little bit. Well, Listen, there's nothing Michael fun Bennett about was, playing offensive Michael, line. Michael Bennett was trying to go for the, he was trying to go he, for the MVP yeah. because he hit me with a <laughs> he wasn't messing around move. he hit me with i get up to the line of scrimmage and i'm like in my head i'm like all right i got him and pass pro i know tyrod's gonna go ahead and fake this run and set up in you the guys pocket, did a seven it. man you guys did a seven man pro in the pro 12, bowl 12 12 12 12 personnel i was actually supposed what? to run the route i was supposed to run the route and gary barnage got the seattle route because i had ran like three of them earlier that that game so i'm coming up to the line of scrimmage and it's like play action like fake boot kind of set yeah. up in the pocket and yeah. man, when I tell you, I, I went up to the line of scrimmage and Michael Bennett is huffing and puffing, full sweat. And you know, he yeah. had those tiny shoulder pads. And I'm like, Couldn't in even my grab head, him. I'm trying to think, like, how the fuck am I about to stop <laughs> this dude? <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I haven't even sweat in this game. And it, we're playing in Hawaii. And it's like, it's, it's not a cold day or anything like that. And I have yet to like have one drop of sweat. And yeah. this dude just comes off the ball like he's about to run right through my chest, and I just was not ready for it. Yeah. Gave me a little hands to the chest and spun on me, and it, I was just like, Tyrod! <laughs> Tyrod! <laughs> Look out! Shout out to the Bennett brothers, man. Yeah, the Bennett brothers are awesome. But what's frustrating, too, about the uh, Pro Bowl is some of the guys are going, like, you don't know what the tempo is. Some guys are not going hard. Some guys are going hard. It's a it's a frustrating. I'm not game. gonna lie. There was a there was a time there was a point in last year's game where I was kind of just embarrassed at the type the style of game that we were playing and the tempo that we were playing at. 
I just I was like, why are, this is we got to figure out something else. So shout out to the PA and the NFL for figuring out something to, something different. Eli and Peyton are going to have something fun fired up. I guarantee it. All right now. Well, Broncos country. We tried. That's right. Come on. <laughs> Come on. We're all trying out here. We're just trying our best, man. We tried. It has been a frustrating year for Broncos fans. Um, for them well, to be in the division and me to not really like the Broncos that much, I'm even sitting here like, man, I was hoping well, for they, something to go their yeah. way, and it just hasn't. Well, hopefully, they just, it does, uh, hopefully it doesn't this week. Shit. Well, they just let out some of their frustration. They fired a first-year head coach, Nathaniel Hackett, after a 51-14 loss to the Rams. Um, on Christmas Players Day. are fighting on the sideline. Christmas Day. I mean, you want to talk – I mean, it's like Scrooge McDuck over there. He's like, you yeah. know, it's like, what's going you on see here? see the backup quarterback getting in fights with the old linemen. You see – Guys fighting after the game, it's um, it's uh, that just it just looks it doesn't look great. It doesn't look great. I'm not gonna hey, shit on it. It doesn't look like it's a fun place to play football right now. I got I got a lot of respect for a lot of guys over there, um, for sure that are going through this this ringer right now. It sucks um, when you're in a situation like that, man. When you've lost a lot of games and and teammates start turning on each other, or, or you know, it's there's so much media around it in general because of the Russell Wilson thing. It's um, it makes it hard, man, and it makes it not fun, which is frustrating. You want to have fun when you're playing football. It's a game. You've loved playing it your whole life, and then all these other things start, you know, creeping in. All the media, uh, uh, you know, what what's going to happen in the future? Head coaches are getting fired. All yeah. these things make it just frustrating to uh, to to play the game that you love. So I, I feel bad for all those guys that are going through it over there in Denver. Uh, wish the best for you. He's the fifth. This is the fifth coach in NFL history to be fired before the end of his first season. That's nuts, man. Damn, Nathaniel. How long was his contract? It had to be a couple of years, right? I'm assuming, I'm assuming three years. I'm assuming it wasn't just a one-year deal. I'll tell you what. What is that, nine months of work for three years of pay? That's not a bad deal. Did he come out winning? Yeah, uh, you know. They're 4-11, and 11, but... Is he winning? He, he basically just signed a one-year contract for you know probably twenty million dollars or whatever. It's not bad. Ruin your whole reputation, I guess. But um, chill out. He'll be all right. He'll get another job. He'll ba- build it back up. He's been a great coach. This is so much more than just uh, you know the head coach. I think there's a lot of things going on there. Head coach is always going to be responsible. You're the head coach, but. There's a lot of things going on right now that it, it looks like is going wrong up there, but I don't want to, you know, you guys are going to play him next week. So, yeah. And, um, yeah, can't get caught up in any of that as, uh, we'll, we'll get to more of, uh, the Broncos stuff later on. Moving on to Mac Jones, dirty play. Um, man, I hate to see it, man. You hate to see it. The internet is, uh, yeah. is up in arms over Mac Jones's hit on Eli Apple. Um, a guy who talks a lot of shit and Does Mac he? Jones probably got fed up with it. I think that might have played into it a little bit, but um, no, Jones you think so? Jones threw his body at Apple's legs while Apple was chasing after Patriots wide receiver Tyquan Thornton during a fumble recovery return. Yeah. Um, man, hate to see it, man. Hate to see it. That that kind of stuff has no business in the league. I've gotten caught up in some some fights here and there where it kind of looks like I'm a dirty player and I just got frustrated and uh you try and keep your composure in moments like that especially when things aren't going great that's when it typically happens when frustration adds to you know not having success onto the field and now it's just a big ball of fuck this and you just do something stupid yeah. um I've definitely had to you know Tighten some you've, things up on my end. Doing you've had stuff. some personal fouls? Just a few. You've had some unsportsmanlike uh, conducts? I had one like two weeks ago, man. Stop it. The league will review Mac Jones's low block on Eli Apple for potential discipline. Um, I mean, he's going to get fined for sure. He's got to get fined. You can't, hit, you can't try and cut it. No, the, the, the league's got to make a stance on it. I, I actually really don't think – I mean, I know it's dirty. 
on its like on the level of like dirtiness, I don't really think it was that bad. Let's turn. I think let's turn on I, some 1980s football, and you tell yeah. me what's dirty. All Listen, right. I watched the play, the first time I saw it. I thought it was dirty as hell because like Eli Apple isn't even involved in the play. Like he's like three people back from where the ball. Came. Like it's like it was just very weird. Yeah. That he chose to do that. Um. But I I feel like it's dirty. If he would have like went in at his knees like hardcore and tried to like. Hurt him, roll hurt him. him. Yeah, it looked yeah, like he was just like, trying to get it him. It looked down. like he just kind of lied down in front of him, like you know, like a sad dog. Like he just kind of like Stop. sat it. He just kind of <laughs> sat it down. He got tripped over. I didn't. I didn't think it was like intent to injure. Like everybody's making it out to be personally. Um, I di- I mean, it's it's definitely not. I think acceptable. I think it's what he did this time mixed with uh, what he's done in the past. Got he's got some you. other questionable ones that I think are more dirty than that one. The, the yeah. sliding with your leg up. And kicking a guy, that's dirty. Well, that's a, that's a that's a Tom Brady used to do that, didn't he? Who else well, used think, to do that? So I think a, most quarterbacks some other quarterbacks most quarterbacks there. slide with their leg up to kind of protect themselves from guys coming in late on them. I think that's normal. But when you kick at the guy, I think that that's I, I think that's dirty, especially in a league that does everything to keep you safe. I think that's dirty as hell. But yeah, um, you being quarterbacks, I hear you on that. But it's definitely yeah. starting to call him the Grayson Allen of the NFL. Are you are you hip to Grayson Allen? Uh, it, no. Yeah, shout out to Grayson Allen. He did some some messed up shit in high school, he and college. He, I mean, he was doing the stuff like hitting guys in the ribs. I mean, some, just some old school good hard nosed basketball, man. I'm not. Yeah, that's sure. what I'm saying. There's, there's I can't like remember. Dirty... I think he was definitely doing some some stuff that was uncalled for for sure. I mean, unless he's like hitting guys in the nuts. I, mean, I think that's exactly what he was doing. Well, that's dirty. That's straight up dirty. Yeah. I don't think it's as hyped up as everybody's making it out to be personally. I just think the league needs to come in and say, hey, listen, you can't do that. And we're going to fine you because that's an illegal play. But I don't think it was as much of an injury attempt as people have made it out yeah. to be. But I do think he, I do think he should be fined for it. That's kind of my stance on it. His uh, his statement after the game was uh, just kind of went down in front of him and tried to stop a fast guy from getting to another fast guy. Just uh, split second decision, and there's not a lot that goes into it. There's yeah, no I mean, hard feelings and definitely no intentions to hurt anybody on that play. Which I don't. I think that's fair. I don't think he was trying to hurt a guy. I think no. he was just frustrated and said fuck it well i think he got posterized by chandler jones the week before and he wasn't going to go up top on the guy all week they probably told him hey go low go low go low on take- what are you doing taking the big guy up top and letting him get stiffy what are you talking about just go at his legs so he's over here running split second decision all week they've been saying hey just go at his legs next time goes at his legs this is true this is true well at least he's learning week to week you know yeah now he, he, now did, he knows he, he can't do that <laughs> now he's not getting posterized but he's Kind of being made out to be one of the dirtiest players in the NFL, but yeah, I don't want to um, rag on him, man. Mac Jones got yeah. me a he got me a Pro Bowl win last year and an extra couple of grand, you so you know there what you I'm go. saying. Shout out the old Mackie Jones, baby. I don't I don't think this is as bad as as people are making it. That that block used to be legal, like just like <sighs> that was my favorite. four years ago. That was my cut favorite block? open field cut block. But this is the thing. It wasn't a cut block. This was he, the other team had the ball. He wasn't even blocked. <laughs> That's what's confusing about the thing. Like <laughs> he blocked somebody who already had the ball. Like it was just very odd to even do it. That's what was. That's what makes it kind of dirty. I don't think the, the the knee thing was really that bad. It was just that like it didn't affect the play at all. You just went low and tripped a guy for no reason. That's what makes it kind of like. All right, you're you're being a bit of a weenie, Mac. All right. We got to stop that. L7 weenie. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Uh, Moving on. (laughs) All right, moving on. So a little weird uh, playoff scenario for the AFC South uh, division. Regardless of what happens in the Titans and Jags games this week. This is wild. um, The division will be decided when they play in the last game of the season in week 18. Yep. Uh, the winner of that game will win the division and go on to the playoffs. So, uh, simply weird. This yeah, week their games does not are mean a thing. The, the games this week are meaningless. Um, it makes you, uh, makes you question, you know, do we just rest our starters? Do we rest, you know, the, some guys at this point in the season could use a, a week off to play a good, meaningful game. That's why you play so hard during the season so you can get that bye week in the playoffs um, because yeah. of how much, you know, towards the end of the season, the week off actually matters. Um, yep. but it's just, that's a, 
It's a weird scenario. I don't know if I've ever heard of this. Well, these uh, these kind of scenarios, whether it's the last game of the year that isn't going to impact playoff situations or for these teams that are already out of the playoffs and now all of a sudden it's like, okay, you know, if we lose, we get a better draft pick, but, you know, we can't you know, lose on purpose. You know, these are always weird situations to be in, and I feel like it's – you don't want to be in too many of these situations because you don't want games to ever feel like they're meaningless, in my opinion. You always want players to think that every game counts, every play matters. Um, that's the kind of culture you want in your building. It's a little bit different when the when you're you're kind of like doing it for a better opportunity in the playoffs. You know what I mean? Like it's like, mm-hmm. hey, we're going to rest guys because we want to win a playoff game. Then it's like, okay, this is being smart. But uh, certainly in the other realm, when you're you know already eliminated. Uh, it feels weird. It does. And um, it's a tough one for, I think, coaches and, and teams to navigate properly. Uh, you still have to make it feel like – you still have to communicate that there's something to be gained from the game. Every time you go out on the field, you can learn something. There's a way to improve. There's a way to – you know, whether it's gaining knowledge of uh, what a defense is doing, whether you're trying to improve something that you messed up the week before or you've been messing up earlier in the season. Yeah. You know, there's always something to gain from playing in the game. It's just – um, for these guys, is is that it's going to be interesting yeah. to figure out? You know, what's does that outweigh? You know, the possibility of maybe the keeping next guys week's fresh game. or keeping guys yeah. healthy? Or yeah, I got a feeling both of these teams feel like they need to still be improving and getting better. So I think they're going to end up playing this game and they're going to play them hard uh, both of their games because they're in this situation that they're in because they haven't played up to what they think their potential is most likely. Pretty wild scenario. And uh, I'd be interested to see what Dougie P and uh, Mike Vrabes Vrabes figure figure out or see what they do, man. It'll be interesting to see as the week goes on. Also, J.J. Watt announces his retirement. A little surprising. The tweet. He announces uh, his first first game for his baby girl as well as his last home game. Surprised the heck out of everybody. Yeah. Uh, a guy that just looks a, like he could keep doing it if he really wanted to. Just a random Tuesday in the in the middle of the season or at the end of the season. Still two games left. Just putting a tweet out there. Hey, this is my last home game ever. What? And you're and you're infamous. What? what? <laughs> Reggie? I was surprised when I saw that. And no, uh, very very surprised. You want to talk about an amazing career, man? JJ's been uh, one of the best all time. Three-time Defensive Player of the Year. I don't know how many Pro Bowls. Walter Payton, Man of the Year. This is this is like the the prototypical like All American boy uh, of the NFL. I feel like oh, it's yeah. JJ Watt. An awesome story too. Going through uh, Wisconsin, I believe he might have started at Central Michigan and then transferred to Wisconsin. He I think I, I think I heard yeah. yeah, he transferred to Wisconsin. I don't know where he was before that, but he was definitely playing tight end. They moved him yeah. to the D-end. He was he at got, Central. I think you're right. I'm pretty sure. And uh yeah, I got another guy that, you know, transfers, finds a home at uh, another position. Uh at least I think that's the story. And um on top of that, either way, either way, I I believe he was a walk on at, at at Wisconsin at first and um became one of the best DNs that the NFL has ever seen and that we've ever seen play football. Yeah, I mean, you want to talk about probably one of the most unstoppable players in his prime or unblockable players. <laughs> I can tell you what, the uh, the Eagles offensive line is certainly happy that you're retiring, JJ. Um, <laughs> I still remember uh, – Countless 2000... amount of quarterbacks that are – Yeah. I, I, I can't – I can still remember, I think, 2014. And JJ's patented move, at least when he played more inside, mm-hmm. he would he would – either jet the gap or he would back door you. And the reason that was hard is like, you know, when somebody's jetting the gap, you got to go down in there hard to make sure you're cutting off penetration. And when you go down in there hard, kind of susceptibility to that is getting back doored. So you open up the back door. Yeah. Tackles were terrified of backing this, uh, blocking this guy in the backside. And, um, he made countless plays on the backside of runs and he, th- yeah. and he made a few of this last game. That yeah. I saw, I hit a, hit a few guys with a backdoor swim move. I, I know I, he's hit me on that one a few times. He's, he's got I'm everybody already, on that one. I'm, I'm already outweighed and out out muscled, and uh, for me to try and cut off that that penetration and for him to backdoor me, I was like, "You sly dog, motherfucker!" Yeah, it's no. hard. Isn't it? Most guys aren't strong enough to be that th- threatening and quick enough to ba- do the backdoor. That's what makes him. That was that's why he was so dominant. Smart player, man. Yeah. Smart. He player. He was smart. He was physical. I still remember playing him in 2014 or playing the Houston Texans and uh, Lane Johnson 
look at him at one point. He looks like he's like seen a ghost. And I'm like, uh, hey, Lane, you, you all right? And he's like, man, it feels like I'm just in the middle of the ocean and there's a big great white <laughs> circling me with a big 99 jersey on. <laughs> I thought that was one of the best. And that's a, uh, that's lines a Pro Bowl right tackle right there, a perennial. A, Every single one of the best in the league, and he has to say that about JJ Watt, man. That's hilarious. hey, when he was in, when JJ was in his prime, he was damn near unblockable on the backside of these zone plays, and we that's that was our bread and butter. We just used to run inside zone left, inside zone right, and uh, man, he would backdoor those tackles or guards, and it was a uh, it was hard uh, making any sli- uh, uh, movement uh, on JJ. So yeah. The ultimate game record, man. And he, and he found himself in the end zone. Honorary tight end, man, down there at the goal line. That's right. I forgot about all that. Yeah. yeah. Him, him and him and Vrabes are the, the the two that I definitely remember being those honorary tight ends that, that were on the defensive side. Maybe that's why he felt so passionate to help out those hurricane victims because he was the hurricane. You ain't lying. In the NFL. Moment. Moving on to the New Heights Stamp of the Week, baby. Uh, this is where we shine light on guys taking their game to new heights. We usually stick around the NFL, but uh, we'll bounce around from college or just something that we see uh, inspiring uh, out here in the world. Uh, Jason, who you got this week? Who's your new heights stamp? Man, I got to go Justin Jefferson. Whenever you JJ. break a record, whenever you break a record by the, the – in my – Mr. Probably Gritty. the receiver – yeah, I mean, I don't think I ever saw a receiver that was more impressive uh, watching than uh, Randy Moss and – Justin Jefferson just broke his uh, single season Vikings record for yards in one season at yeah. 1,632. Um, he also broke Chris Carter's, another legend, another uh, legend, record of 122 catches in a season. So uh, he's in good company and he's taking his game to new heights if you're uh, breaking records by those guys. 122 catches with two mm-hmm. games left. Two I mean, games I know, left. I know we're playing 17 now, but still, that's wild. He's 209 yards away from breaking Calvin Johnson's 16-game NFL record of uh, 1,964. Yep. So Cooper there's Cup. a chance he can get that Cooper done. Cooper Cup came very, very close last year. Um, and I expect Justin Jefferson to uh, to get that one, assuming that he plays in the next yeah. two games. What happens with the uh, records from the six? Do there are there like asterisks in the uh, record books for like sixteen games? I mean, we talked about this last week. Jim Brown played, I think, twelve game 12. seasons or something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like what? Mike, Mike Dick had played like eight, and he had a thousand yards. It was like it was some stupid. He was like That's the first crazy. tight end to get a thousand yards, and it was like yeah, not even ten games in the season. Wow. It was bogus. I might have just pulled that out of my ass, but yeah, I, Dicka, either Dicka way. definitely played in the era of uh, not not definitely not sixteen or seventeen games that we're playing. Yeah. So do you, does it still count? Does it mean less? It counts. I, I mean, it sure it, counts. It sure counts. But if I you mean, get almost two thousand yards, I don't care how many games. <laughs> that's a that's impressive. That's a hell of a feat. That's for damn sure. He was asked about the possibility of a receiver winning MVP in his. Response was having the type of season I'm having. I feel like that's a conversation that needs to be had for me to be the MVP. Talk, talk your shit, JJ. Talk about hey, advocate for yourself. Talk uh, your shit. <laughs> I like that, man. I like that. I think uh, I think he is 100 percent um, the MVP on that team for for damn yeah. sure. The way he's no playing, question. how he's getting these yards. I mean, these aren't easy catches. He's making spectacular catch after spectacular catch. Breaking guys off left and right, getting wide wide open. He uh, he broke off one of the best uh, cornerbacks in the league in uh, Stephon Gilmore on a on a fake hezzy slant. It was it was crazy. It was yeah. It was a goal line route and uh, kind of just put him in a blender for a touchdown. Um, no, it was the return return stop and go. It was a crazy route. It's a made up route um, as they <laughs> as they all are. Um, all the good ones are made up. All, all the good ones are just you know on the fly. But uh, shout out to JJ for taking his game to new heights, uh, and keep that keep it going, man. I hope you get both these records and all the records this year, man. But I'm going with a tight end, baby. Shout out to tight end you. Oh, shocker! <laughs> you got you to gotta show love, baby. I know. Tease. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you're taking your game to new heights, like Shane Zilstra. Zilstra. Yeah. Zil, the Zilmeister. Zilmeister. Uh, it's the, be like Greek or something like the that. The Detroit Lions tight end at. Uh, Five receptions, twenty six yards, and three touchdowns, baby. Oh, almost had the Al almost Bundy. Al Bundy. Oh, almost almost had, had the Al Bundy, baby. A very similar stat line to me getting seven receptions, 
It's for a selfish 25 game. yards. It's a selfish game. I mean, you better be run blocking <laughs> to get that and stat four line. touchdowns. Not a terrible game, though. Not a terrible game. You get three touchdowns. You're happy. You're balling, baby. You're balling, yeah. baby. And you play for a tight end, a tight end coach. You five love for twenty six. So he, he averaged five yards a catch, just over. Uh, yeah. Whenever your touchdown is over your yards per catch, that's a bogus. That's a bogus award. Yeah. No, that's a bogus that's, stat line. That is what I call a buns record. You are on the <laughs> booty side of that record, and that's that's one that I hold right there. I had the I had four touchdowns and averaged only like three point four yards a catch. Uh, but shout out to Saint Zilstra, baby. Uh, Detroit Lions tight end for taking his game to New Heights, man. Getting in the end zone three times is way to go. That's, that's a special feeling right there. All righty, let's look on to next week. Let's do it, man. Saints at Eagles. You guys playing at the link? Both games uh, this year are going to be on New Year's. That is, both our games are on New Year's Day. Um, how do you how do you feel about playing on New Year's Day? Is that a holiday game? Is that a holiday game? That's a holiday game. New Year's Day in Philadelphia is a holiday, Trev. We got the Mummers Parade. Come on oh. now, coming coming down Broad Street, I think. I you think rock it's coming it, back. Gonna, are you going to rock the? Sure, so I'm going to be at a game. I, I'm not are rocking you... a mummer suit to the game. No, 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 no. Oh. No. You can't dress as? Well, I can dress as, but I only wear mummer suits for specific occasions or if I'm at the parade. Yeah. Yeah. Parades only. Mummers outfits are parades only. That's right. That's a good way to say it right there. <laughs> Very nice. The Eagles can can clinch the number one seed and home field advantage throughout the NFC playoffs with a win, baby. And that is the really the biggest reason you play the regular season is to be able yeah. to get that number one seed or get slotted to where you get that advantage. Maybe a dumb question, but how do you handle balancing needing to win the number one seed but also needing to stay healthy for the playoffs? Uh, <laughs> do you, you just can't think about – yeah, we're not focused on the health aspect. Of it. We're focused on winning the game. You know, I think at this point it's too early to worry about that. We got to go out there. We got to play a game against a really good team in the Saints. I don't care that the record is uh, below 500. These guys have great players on defense, especially their D line. Uh, their head coach, who was the defensive coordinator for a long time, Dennis Allen, uh, is one of the hardest ones that I've ever been up against. He can scheme things up. He, mm-hmm. It's a, it's always going to be a well coordinated defense when he's there. One thousand percent. So. Um, you know, I'm, you know, we got to go out there. We got to play a good game. We got to win the game, and uh, that's going to be our focus. Uh, and um, you can't worry about all that other stuff. If you're worried about yeah. that other stuff. You ain't going to be doing anybody one bit of good uh, for that game. The so, best best way you can handle it is play your tail off this week, get that win, and then get two weeks to maybe rest up. Everything else will set, sort itself out. You already stay in the baby. moment. That's going to be what. I'm preaching. I'm sure it's what Nick's going to be preaching all Get to week. Go up against my guy, all the veterans. Cam Jordan, baby. I yeah. love this Cam Jordan, man. One of the, one of my favorite personalities and just great great people in the NFL. I like him. I like him when he's not on the field. I, I really enjoy <laughs> Cam. Not blocking him. He's a great guy. Uh, blocking him is difficult. So. I'm right there with you. I'm not sure if I've ever had a, a good rep against Cam Jordan. <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, they, they got some guys in the back end. You know, hopefully, uh, hopefully they got guys, guys all can... over the place. They're they're, they're a good team. Um, they're, they're, they got good linebackers, good defensive linemen, good DBs, and they got a good de- uh, head coach, defensive coordinator. So I'm not, you know, <laughs> another, we're gonna have another, to play. Another. We're gonna have to play a really good game in order to beat the Saints, and that's all I'm focused on. All right now. All right, you guys got Broncos at Chiefs. Yeah talking a little bit about it before man this team is um this team's got some got some shit going on in the they're organization soul searching. they're soul, they're soul searching, searching right now they just um, fired their head coach yeah uh and if you've looked at the other teams that have fired their coaches they're kind of bouncing back a little bit the panthers have uh won some games the colts uh, they start, are, yeah they they won the did they win the first game that jeff i think they won the first one that uh it was close i'm pretty sure they got the win yeah so i mean listen for some reason, uh, teams with uh, uh, new interim coaches have fared well this year, it seems like. And uh, I don't know if it galvanizes people. It kind of like brings the guys together. I don't know what's going on, but um, you're going to get a fired up Broncos team. That's for yeah. damn sure. That's for damn sure. And they still have one of the best defenses in the league. Um, mm-hmm. Outside of getting scored 51 points against the Rams on them, uh, yeah. the Rams scoring 51 points on them, it is uh, – that you can't look at any of that stuff, man. You got to look at what's real, and these guys play hard, uh, especially on the defensive side. And what we got going, 
they, these guys play hard. They play together, and uh, they don't give up a lot of points. At least that's what it's been like throughout the season uh, outside yeah. of last week. And, um, yeah, we had a little bit of success uh, in the first half last last time we played them, but it is, uh, it's just so much harder to beat a team twice, man. And because uh, they know which they know which how you you're gonna attack them and uh, and um, kind of get more in, ingrained in the the matchups um, and it becomes just a little bit more of a mental game than a, than a physical game. So we'll see. It's uh we're done. we we still have a lot to clean up, uh, especially on the offensive side of the ball as a team playing together, putting an entire game together, all four quarters. Um, I don't necessarily think we've done that. We've gotten close on a few games, and this game is uh, is definitely gonna, you know, be one of those four quarter games that we gotta we gotta come together for uh, for the whole thing, man. All sixty minutes. You had a rivalry game last week against Geno and had one of your best games. Do we need to create a rivalry this week? And if there is a rivalry, think. no, because I, I mean, think. the Broncos are just rivals in general. But who would it be if we were to create a rival? Um, what player? Would you go defense or would you keep it still on offense? Would, would you go Alex would, Singleton, the tackling machine, Alex Singleton, former Eagle? Oh, Shout out. The, the Montana, Montana State. Yeah. Um, CFL, CFL uh, defensive, player, ooh, defensive player of the year, right? I didn't know that. Ooh, I think so. That's yeah, a fun stat. Pretty sure. Um, um, no, it would we, probably do you, be, do you go quarterback again? You go Russell? I, no, I beat Russell the last time, So, but that was the first time I beat Russell. Yeah, because I, I lost guys, to him in college. Guys lost He's to him a fashionable college, guy. Maybe you guys – you lose in fashion? I'm not sure. What is it? What has he been rocking the games? What does he I rock? Know. I feel like he's a fashionable guy. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. He's married. He's married to Sierra. He's got to be fashionable, right? Yeah, she's definitely got him buttoned up for sure. <laughs> for <laughs> sure. Um, Who else? It Who would else probably be there? the uh, the safeties. I got a lot of respect, oh, yeah? and I actually train with uh, both Justin Simmons and Kareem Jackson. Uh, Kareem, I've been going up against him since we got in the league together. Uh, mm -hmm. he's, uh, one before with the, uh, Houston Texans earlier on in my career. And then when he moved to Denver, I've been seeing him twice a year. And, uh, that dude is no slouch, man. He's, he's been a, you know, he's been an unbelievable staple for every defense that he's been in a smart guy, physical guy, uh, can play in the box and he can play deep. You can put him in man to man coverage. I mean, there's been a lot of back and forth, uh, between what you're me doing. and Kareem here. I see what you're doing. Showing love trying, to, the, to the guys trying that to I lull, trained with. And, trying to lull Kareem to sleep. I see what you're doing. Trying to do, do the Derwin James. You're trying to do the Derwin James to him. Yeah, well, it didn't it didn't work for Derwin, so <laughs> I don't think Kareem's going to fall for that one either. Uh, but him and Justin Simmons got tremendous respect for both those guys, and if there was anything, um, that would probably be it, is me trying to gain some yards on these uh, this hell of a duo that they got in the back end. Well, I think that wraps up the show, Travis. Um, that's it, man. That's it, man. Come We're on, already man. done. What else do you want to talk about? I think we got it all. Congrats again, JJ, on a fine NFL career. Um, I think we JJ. hit everything. <laughs> if JJ was anybody in a uh, fictional movie, who would he be? Of oh. all the fictional, I feel like he'd be Gary Bertier. Nah, you got to go body body frame, Mister Incredible. No, I'm talking about football, football, sports. <laughs> but he's, he's Gary Bertier. <laughs> Gary Bertier. I can like, see that. like it's like a buttoned up strong like, side, left side. <laughs> just give him a chance, mom. Team, I don't. What team? I don't want to get to know him, Gary. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> so that wraps L it up. All right. <laughs> L Lane always says that he reminds him of Gary Bertier. That wraps it up, boys and girls. Everyone watching. 19th episode of New Heights is Damn. in the books. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube to the New Heights channel so you can uh, see our new videos when they show up. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And uh, make sure to check out the official merch at homage.com slash New Heights. I love the merch, man. Our team's doing yeah. a hell of a job. Homage is doing a hell of a job. Once again, New Heights is a Jukes original presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment. Make sure you follow us on all social platforms at New Heights Show with one S at New Heights Show uh, for fun clips throughout the week. And uh, thanks to our production and crew every single week. We love you guys. You guys make this so easy on us and you make us look way better than we are. So thank you guys for always doing that for us and making this show so much fun. Until next week. Peace.